What's up, Canes fans? Happy Friday. Welcome to the Canes Insight Daily Podcast brought to you by Anna Jarn Levine, Accident Attorneys. Got a fun show for you today. We're going to be talking about the linebacker position, a position that is much improved under Coach Mario Cristobal and Coach Derek Nicholson, who just got a nice new contract promotion to Code DC. And we'll be doing my favorite segment of the week, which is football school with Coach Mike Zuckerman. He was a linebacker coach for many years at the college level, most recently a linebacker coach at Utah State. And he'll be talking about how to evaluate high school linebackers from a coach's eyes, coach's perspective, what they look for, really educating Canes fans on, on how coaches look at the game, which is always a lot of fun. He'll also break down film on Elijah Melendez, Miami's linebacker commit. First, I want to talk about our friends at NHR and Levine Accident Attorneys. If you've been in an accident, you could be entitled to significant compensation. Someone you care about been in an accident, same thing. You want the absolute best looking after your case from soup to nuts, from the beginning to end. Experts every step of the process. Don't go looking for a rookie, a friend of a friend. Deal with the absolute best. Anna Jarn Levine, Accident Attorneys, 1-800-747-3733, 1-800-747-FREE. Take back control of your life. Give it to the experts, Anna Jarn Levine. So we're talking linebackers today, a position that has been the topic of a lot of discussion over the past few years it was very strong when Manny Diaz was defensive coordinator with coach Rick, Shaq Quarterman, Mike Pickney, Zach McLeod. Then as you transitioned into the Manny Diaz head coach era, we struggled. The position didn't look the right way, shorter, smaller players, slower players, and the production followed. Mario Cristobal has sought to transform the position. And so far we are seeing some results along with Linebacker coach and now co-defensive coordinator Derek Nicholson very quickly got a promotion. Somebody that's very coveted in the college football and NFL circles as a coach, a major riser, future DC all the way, and someone who's done a great job recruiting. So just to put in perspective, I wanted to walk through some of the body types that Cristobal has added to the program since he became the head coach. I'll start with Bobby Washington, and these are Miami Hurricanes official listings as far as the, the height and weight. Bobby Washington, 6'3", 220 pounds. This is somebody with a lot of speed, verified 4'4 type guy. He's in playing that Sam striker, big nickel position, which we talked about. We did a podcast with Mike Zuckerman, the football school, which, again, we're having football school right after this segment to talk about linebacker evaluation. But we did a segment with him to talk about that position, that quasi-safety linebacker position reason I'm including Bobby Washington here and not with that position is because he's also playing traditional Mike and Will in practice. He has the ability to do that. One of the reasons why is because not only is he fast like a safety, he is 6'3", 220 pounds, having a nice spring. Shifting gears to a lower-rated player from Georgia that Miami picked up, Marcellus Pulliam, 6'3", 230, someone who really was a sleeper, had some very nice senior film, has done some things in, in at University of Miami, had an interception last year. Big run stuff for again, 6'3", 230. That's defense end size, playing middle and weak side linebacker for the Miami Hurricanes. Someone who's an interesting player to keep an eye on. Someone who's starting all spring, Popo Aguirre, from, also from Georgia. Highly rated player, Georgia. Alabama, Ohio State, all after him. Miami was able to land him. And the reason why all these schools were after him, 6'2", 233, can run, can play all three downs. Big hitter, great instincts, which he's shown. We talked about him yesterday on the on the practice wrap-up podcast after the full pads practice. He's someone who's doing extremely well this spring and brings a complete linebacker package to the table with the size at 6'2", 233. Someone who came in as a transfer and had an outstanding year last year, Kiko Mauanoa, 6'3", 230. Going to be a preseason All-ACC player. Switch to jersey number one, which, by the way, if you're looking for that number one jersey, go to caneswear.com. They got the new number one jerseys, restocked, got a ton of them, all colors. Whether you're a Cam Ward fan or a Kiko Maunoa fan, who, again, now is wearing number one, get that number one jersey. Also, Canes baseball gear, Miami Hurricanes, uh, basketball, baseball, Miami Heat, who are about to get ready to go to the playoffs and make a run, Florida Panthers, who are doing really well, Inter Milan, you name it, they've got it at Caneswear and Caneswear.com. But back to Kiko Maunua, wear number one, 6'3", 230. This is someone who got almost eight sacks last year. He's built like an outside pass rusher, but he has the speed to go sideline to sideline, 
to read his keys and to play a traditional linebacker position. But the size is different. Adarius Hayes, who might be flipped from Florida this year, top 100 player, 6'4", 230. Again, this is built like a defensive end. So one thing I want to point out about Darius Hayes is the first couple of practices, no pads, running around, workouts running around. He wasn't generating a ton of buzz like Camp Pruitt was because he's not. that's not his game. He's not the fastest linebacker in the world. When the pass came on yesterday, he was thumping. He was hitting people. Coach Nicholson talked about him in the post-game interview, the post-practice interview with a big smile on his face. I think that's important to note that this is somebody who thrives in full contact. Big reason why, 6'4", 230 pounds. Really the only small guy of the bunch, smallish guy, is Wesley Besaint. He's listed at 6'1", 205. I think he's much bigger than that. But he's more of your run and hit, fast South Florida linebacker. And really, he's the only one on this list that was sort of a Manny recruit. Although Cristobal was more than happy to get him, wanted him badly. I think that was his first visit when he signed. So he wanted Wesley Besaint badly. I think 6'1", 205 is probably a little underselling him as far as his listed size, but he's the one guy that's a little smaller, but he packs a big punch. Compared to Manny, and I'm not going to go through all the all the individual numbers, but you remember what these guys look like. Avery Hook or Avery Huff, very light. Sam Brooks, very light. Keontra Smith, sort of a safety in high school, 5'11". Tyreek Austin Cave, undersized linebacker. Corey Flagg, 5'11". Chase Smith, who has nice size, he's actually the only guy left from this group. So he's still part of this Mario Cristobal team, and he does have excellent size. Tyler Johnson left, and Deshaun Troutman, an undersized linebacker from the Orlando area. So those are the linebackers that Manny Diaz signed when he was head coach. Not a very inspiring group. If I had to pick the guy I'd want from that group physically, it's Chase Smith, and he's the one that's still here. So that tells you how the linebacker position has evolved. And we're going to talk to Coach Mike Zuckerman, Linebacker coach from Utah State, spent many years in Miami Hurricanes, knows the position backwards and forwards, and he's going to talk to you about how to evaluate the linebacker position from the eyes of a coach. All right, joining me now on the Canes Insight Daily Podcast, as he does every week here, Mike Zuckerman, former Miami assistant and longtime, and what was it, ten, almost 10 years here in Miami, Zuck, and uh, former Utah State linebacker coach the last couple years, uh, and now we're lucky enough to have him weekly here on the Canes Insight Show, breaking down things here as we call it football school. A lot of the misconceptions that the fans talk about on the message boards and on social media, we get to really dive into the intricacies of a lot of these things with Coach Zuck. Appreciate you for joining us this week once again, Zuck. How are you doing today? Of course, man. Doing good. Maybe some March Madness. Yeah, man. As you see, I have my, you know, we were talking about it before. It's a sad day for me here as the tournament. <laughs> I have my final four shirt on from last year, but they'll be back. Revenge season loading mm -hmm. for the Canes. Um, but Coach Hell's a New Yorker, man. He'll get it right. Yep. Yep. As, as you're up there in, in new row, baby. So, uh, <laughs> Zuck, today wanted to get into the linebacker position in specific, which, of course, again, you've coached extensively throughout your your career and over there at utah state that was your position group as well and look it's a position that has changed a ton right over the past 10 15 years in terms of evaluations because you're not getting the same sort of athlete coming out now at that position that's not what the game it calls for like it used to in terms of getting these downhill thumpers right so we'll get into all of that but just from a general standpoint, when you are evaluating this position as a high school guy coming out, right? Just let's, let's talk about the few main things that you're looking for when you pop on that tape. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the most interesting things that was ever told to me about linebacker play is, you know, when you look at Pop Warner, Little League football, right? The most athletic kid gets put at quarterback or running back so he can touch the ball every play, right? You know, the, everyone kind of like by their skill set gets placed. The biggest kids get put on the line, all that stuff. The linebacker is normally not any one shape or size. It's normally the best football player, like the most instinctual guy on that team gets put at spot from a young age because it's just – I've always believed there is no one linebacker type. It's the most instinctual position on the field because 
you're playing in a short area of space with movement in front of you where you have to understand schemes, you have to understand pass coverage, and you have to understand how everything in front of you behind you plays. So, you know, that's the number one thing I think when you start looking at linebackers is yes, there are like obviously everybody wants the six foot three, 250 pound long arms guy who can run, right? But those, there's not a ton of those people out there. So the biggest thing to me is after the, you know, your initial non negotiable measurables is that you are finding a guy who instinctually feels the game is smart and is tough to me that 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 especially being in a place like utah state you know like we're going to talk about miami's commit in a little bit and being at miami forever you know that's more when you're at the power five level and the top power fives that's more looking at the cream of the crop and then figuring out which ones are the perfect fit for you when you go down a level when you're at you know the group of five or you're recruiting fcs d2 d3 you need to find the best football players and be willing to figure out where you are willing to sacrifice in terms of, you know, what skills you're going to give up. Because obviously if they have every single skill I just described, they're going to Miami, they're going to an SEC school. So I think that smart and toughness factor is the number one thing in any linebacker, because I mean, we've all seen it. You've seen over the years, a million guys who look like a million bucks and can run super fast and just can't make a play at linebacker because there's so much quick, reactional thinking that has to go on there so that that's kind of my non-negotiable is that they've got to be a football player period yeah. and then obviously we'll look at height and length and all those things like that but they got to be able to make a play and look there's a million different examples we could use over the last five to ten years at miami but you give certain athletes the mindset and you know the the smarts and the instincts that a Corey flag has Right. And, and how many first round picks would you have? Right. And a guy like Corey Flagg is really he was underappreciated by Miami fans because he was having to play a, a role that, you know, ideally he'd, you'd be a more of a rotational guy at Miami. But he had to play a, you know, a, a primary role. Right. So it, it's crazy how much the position position has changed. Right. And just having to project from the high school level. Right. Because of what you're talking about that a lot of these guys you're gonna have to sacrifice whether it's height weight speed thing right when it comes to the position and projecting from high school to the next level how difficult is that and what are the key things that you're looking at i i think linebacker is extremely difficult because like of what i just mentioned where you can have every physical attribute and get to college and not be able to see the game you know, that that's one thing I think Corey's such an awesome example that you brought up and you say maybe underappreciated, maybe shouldn't have been playing here. Well, the guy went through, I don't know how many coaching staffs, right? And no one could beat him out. Everyone kept putting him on the field and he kept making plays because, and I'll tell you this from when, you know, Blake Baker recruited Corey, he went and saw him and he was brilliant and the way he practiced and the way he led and that guy, he took something from the board and immediately knew it and learned it and could see the game extremely well and he tackled well and he played fast. You know, I don't, I don't know what 40 time Corey would run, but he played fast. And that's a big deal because he saw the game so well and was tough. Um, you know, like I, I look at my time at Miami and how many different good body types you have. When I was in school, I, I absolutely loved watching Sean Spence. And when I was in the same class as him, you know, and Sean was legitimate. He was probably 6'1", maybe at, at a, as a freshman, 205 pounds and got up to about 220 at the most. But he was long and could run. But the biggest thing was he was brilliant. He saw the game ridiculously well. You know, you look at Denzel Perriman. Denzel, you know, he was thick, but he was 5'10 at best. But again, an extremely explosive hitter that saw the game extremely well. Shaq Horderman's more built like your typical Mike, but saw the game extremely well. Mike Pinckney, same. he's more undersized, but just incredible instincts. That's why, like, the biggest thing to me in linebacker recruiting is you have to talk to the kid. You have to watch him practice. You have to talk to the kid. You have to talk ball, see if he understands what's going on and, you know, and, and really truly sees the game. One thing and we'll get into with um, Elijah, but one thing that I found, especially being at Utah State, that I loved, you know, and looking for an under a guy who was under recruited is running back instincts, actually. Because I do think it's very hard sometimes to see instincts as linebacker on linebacker film because, you know, 
so I, you know, all respect to high school coaches. The best coach I know in the world is a high school coach. But a lot of times when you don't have the coaches to, you know, really drill down on every position, a lot of linebacker playing high school is go tackle the guy with the ball. You know, and like I said, no disrespect to anybody, but a lot of times it just that that does happen on the high school level. And the first time a linebacker is taught to read things and react and not just chase where he thinks the ball is, is in college and he can't do it. So when you see running back film, however, I, I've always thought the vision that you are making cuts with and things like that, that, that can translate as a linebacker. Um, so that's a way you can kind of use high school film to evaluate whether this guy can see and what's going on. Because if you really think about it, linebacker play is reverse running back play. Yes, you have gaps and you have responsibilities and everything like that, but you are tracking to the first opening where the running back and the same thing is tracking to run into that first opening. And if you understand what's going on and can meet him there, then you're going to be a good linebacker. Linebacker tends to be a highlight reel position, right? When it comes to the fans and the fans making their own evaluations and assumptions on, you know, who can play and who can't, right? If we can kind of get into some of the, I guess you could call them again, misconceptions from a, a fan standpoint where I'll pull up a, a highlight uh, tape here. This is, this is an old one. I, I'm sure well, you're going to say Jeff Luke. I, I am. I am. <laughs> I, I was going to bring him up, man. I swear. We didn't talk about that before. That That is like the perfect example. So I have it ready. Obviously, he was one of a kind back in the day here. Let's see, let's see how grainy this footage is here. Yeah, I remember um, watching this in college. Yeah. So, so a guy who was very, you know, it was viral before viral was a thing. Right. This was back in 2010. So 2008, 2009, 2010 here, that that era. I mean, he's making plays here that make people say, wow. But. Why is this, you know, just it's something that you can't really judge everything on when it comes to the position. So a big thing. And I think you'll notice it in this tape because I remember just saying, this is before I was truly involved and had learned how to evaluate film and football and everything. I watched this in a dorm room in Miami and was like, oh, my God, this guy's like the best linebacker of all time. Um, but one thing that you learn with a lot of highlight tapes, because there's a lot of kids out there who have tapes of just smashing people. And you notice it as this tape goes on is almost every single thing that he does on this tape is in a straight line. Running, if, if that is a big red flag to me, if I don't see you change direction on tape or the one or two times you do change direction, it doesn't look fluid. OK, because everything in a linebacker, very little in linebacker play is running in a straight line. It's almost all short, choppy movements and how quickly you can change direction within that box. You know, like, yeah, there's going to be a guy you play in space, but a lot of times that ends up being your hybrid guy, which we talked about in um, the last video anyway. Um, so it's like, how do you maneuver in that box? How well do you change direction? And can you tackle a running back in a, you know, like they do the rabbit drill at camp, right? It's actually a great drill because, you know, can you tackle a guy in a short amount of space and make the necessary changes in direction to do, make that tackle? Um, you know, one thing that I think is a real, like, so I, I was lucky enough, one of the co older coaches at Utah State taught me this early. And because he had been down more, I, I'd spent most of my career in Miami. He'd been at Arkansas State before we came to Utah State and had spent his career mostly Division II. He was like, you won't believe how many coaches don't go back and watch the game tape. He's like, we've got huddle now. He's like, back in the day, it was hard to get full game tape. He's like, we've got huddle. You need to go watch the entire game and make your own cut ups. And, you know, we call them profile tapes, which is not a highlight tape. It's a cut up of every time you do anything good or bad, um, which I know is obviously, and you know, um, from the – in the NFL, that's what they do with every prospect. So right. especially with huddle, you know, you need to go back when you see a highlight tape and you're not sure you need to go watch that game tape, especially for linebackers. That's going to tell you a lot. There's been kids where I've been like, man, this guy's awesome. And then the only good plays he have, he has were those three minutes on the highlight tape. And there are horrible plays on there. Whereas conversely, there's some kids you're like, this kid doesn't, you know, he's okay and everything. And you go watch him you're like, oh my God, I love this guy. You know, I've, I've had both of those. So I, I just you see you see with a guy like that. Look, he doesn't make mistakes or exactly. Or you 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 look at one of these guys who, who maybe does have flashing, uh, you know, physical, physical ability, but just needs to be coached up. And the mistakes aren't that egregious. Right. And you look at him and say, this guy 
if we can mold him a little bit, then we might have something here. Correct. And, and it's, you know, going back to Jeff Loop, you know, I remember being, remember, remember um, the fan base being upset because we weren't recruiting him that hard. And everyone was like, what are they doing? Blah, blah, blah. But I guarantee you, the linebackers, I think it was Coach Barrow at the time, he probably went and watched the kid play live or they had a game tape and he saw what he needed to see that he couldn't change direction well enough for what they wanted to do. And Miami's always had more athletic linebackers, you know, and it's in the schemes they've played. And that's probably the reason, you know, that that's one biggest thing I've learned is I, I don't like to ever talk about like, why did these coaches do this? Because everybody's trying to win. There's nobody who's in a program who's just like, I'm going to get myself fired, you know, and it's a very th thin margin to get yourself fired in college football. So I, I, I truly believe, like you could be wrong, but nobody is trying to be wrong. If that makes sense. Right. So, Zuck, we'll get into now a commit for Miami's next recruiting class here, the 2025 class, Elijah Melendez. I know you had the chance to take a look at some of his film here. I'll, I'll bring up the huddle. And this is a guy who I've had a chance to see up close, looks the part for sure. And as we'll get into here, a guy who flashes all over the place on his, on his highlights, as we'll get into just right off the bat here, the first play of his tape. Yeah, I mean, the, the first thing that stands out to me, and you see the picture, I mean, this kid has size and length, you know, because just obviously always a plus, you know. I, and to me, length, if you could pause it for a sec, Pete. Yeah. Um, length to me is almost more important than height because I don't need, as a box linebacker, like if, if you're 5'11 and have long arms, you can do everything you need to do, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, that makes up for it because you can keep linemen off of you. You don't need – the height helps just in terms of putting on more weight, but it doesn't need, but this, it doesn't, it's not like mandatory that you're tall as a linebacker. Um, you could tell with him, I would say he's at least six. I don't know what he's listed at. I'd say he's at least six one. Yeah. One thing you learn is that every kid is shorter than they're listed. Every single one, you know, I don't, it doesn't just for whatever reason, you know, everyone over lists them. And also people don't really truly understand how tall six one is a lot mm -hmm. of the time. I guarantee you, Everyone watching this video, if you go have someone NFL measure you right now, you're probably an inch shorter than you thought you were your entire life. Right. So, but this kid, obviously, you can see he has a great frame. He's long and he's not like super bulky, which I think is a good thing too, because that means he he's can put on weight without losing his speed, in my opinion. So, um, but the, right here, yeah. So this first clip, it's kind of what I talked about. I love that his first clips is a running back. You know, and he makes a nice cut. He works inside his uh, lineman because to me right there, and then you see him pull away with speed. So one, right away I see this kid has some instincts and he can run, which that's probably the next thing. If, if the first physical trade I look for is I want a linebacker that can run. You know, it, this game is so much in space. And, you know, obviously you're going to need a guy who can thump and play in the box and everything like that. But if you have a guy who can run, and then you can put the size on or whatever strength he needs later. Like that, that can mask a lot of problems. And even when you screw up, you can fix things with your speed. And and, and I'm noticing there too, like a leaner torso. You know, mm -hmm. not in a bad way, but I, you know, I think that's probably something you look for in a modern modern day linebacker. For sure. I mean, yeah, yeah, because you know, I mean, in some kids, that, trust me, I've had some linebackers that have guts, but um, you know, it, it it's you'd much rather have a kid who you're putting weight on than a kid who you're always fighting the battle to get him down. Definitely. So have this next play here. Okay. So the thing I love, so you watch this play now, um, what you're going to see right away is he kind of starts downhill a little bit. And then once the ball's on the perimeter, you just see that burst right there to me. I love that because he's initially, and then you see his ability to run and his length to finish the play. I love the burst because that to me, like I said earlier, your short area quickness and your ability to accelerate is 10 times more important than how far and fast you can run in a straight line. That's something I don't know how much you saw when Jeff Luke's highlight tape, like just like that, that, like bang, I go. So he goes fast. You know, you could see his explosion right there because that's going to tie into directly, and you see it later in the tape. That's how much you can generate power quickly. How fast you can accelerate is directly tied into how quickly you can generate power in a tight space, which is, you know, in terms of tackling somebody in the hole. So, I mean, that right there, I mean, those two clips right there, you can already see this dude is a high-level Division One athlete. And now it's more about, you know, digging in and figuring out what exactly he 
he can do, you know, can he play in the box, things like that, which this next clip, you know, I, I always really love with linebacker play when you see offenses like this, you know, these old school, I think this is like a single wing type offense because if you're just running around out there and not truly reading versus an offense like this, you know, I, I played in a wing tee and when you played against the linebacker who didn't know what they were doing, they were super easy to block because they would just be looking all over the place. You can see there's a whole bunch of backs in the backfield and everything. But what I like there is you see right there, there's a pulling guard on the left. So he sees the pulling guard on the left. And as the backside linebacker in almost any scheme you can run, whenever your guard pulls, you're running through the next available gap because the gap's changed. And I love that immediately you see him run and um, you see him strike on the uh, on the finish. Now, can you go back? Yeah, right here. The one thing now that I did pick up on this clip, which I think is something that's something to monitor for him to improve on as the season goes, you know, as this in this season, and that will be something to monitor, is he finishes a lot of his plays very high. He's a bigger kid and he's bigger than most of the people he's going against. Like if you watch, he's higher than almost everyone he tackles and knocks over on this tape, which is fine. He can generate the power to do that right now. At the next level, if you're just going to run into people high with your shoulder, they're not going to fall over. You know, a few might, but good players are not. So that's a thing to watch in his bending, and that's one thing I kind of notice. It's like, all right, pad level is a thing that's going to be where he needs to improve. Next play here, I believe he's showing off uh, mm -hmm. some pass rushing. Yeah, and this is the thing, and this is really common with high school kids. Um, you can see right here, and again, I, I want to point out, he runs in and just hits with his chest straight up, okay, versus a running back who he's a clearly a level above, that's fine. But you can see right there, that is a bad body position to be in. You know, And kids, this isn't any fault of his you know, because he makes a sack, but a lot of times highlights are things that college coaches see that are like, eh. Nah. This isn't. Like, it's a good play. It's just in college, one of the things many high school linebackers have to learn to do is pass rush because it's just not a thing. Even in college, it's a struggle with everything you've got to teach as a linebacker coach to coach pass rush. Like, there's just only so much time. And if you go in on a running back like this who's a good running back in college, you're either going to get cut and flipped on your face or he's going to stone you right there. So that's just an area, again, where he can work on for this coming season and getting better in terms of just pass rush ability. Yeah, they're so used to just beating guys with pure speed or, you know, physicality or being a free free blitzer right at the high mm -hmm. school level that there's no working in the hands, nothing nothing that nothing like that because it's just it comes so easy to them physically. Yeah. And that that's one of the hardest types of tapes to evaluate, which you saw a lot at least in when I was there in Dade County is like the athletic Sam Brooks type who's mm -hmm. rushing off the edge every play. Mm -hmm. And those are, you know, you see incredible speed and movement skills, but a lot of times they're just rushing unblocked. And it's like, okay, this kid's linebacker sized. I really need to go get him in camp and work with him and get him on the board and figure out if he actually can be a linebacker mm -hmm. or whether he just knows to chase the ball. So we got the next um, up here. Yeah. So now, I mean, obviously right here you can see the natural, like I talked about, acceleration and then that gener that acceleration leads to explosion, right? Like this is what – you know, you see this on a highlight tape. And obviously, if it was all just running a straight line and hitting people, which he's already obviously shown, he can do a little bit more than that. But th this excites you, you know. And then I, what I like here is he kind of – you can see a little bit of bend. I'd like to see him bend a little bit more. Again, these big-time hits aren't going to happen when he's higher than the next guy at the next level. But it's just clear right here you can see how explosive of a player he could be, you know. That this is exciting. And one what one thing I like, too, is he's going straight ahead. Like, he doesn't stop. You know what I mean? A lot of times you see kids start to gather a little bit before they hit people. He just runs full speed into people. That's a mentality thing, which I really like. Yeah, no doubt about it. He's not uh, he's not he's not slowing down for them whatsoever. No, uh, that's it. And that's a thing. Like, like, and that's not like a killer in right. terms of defensive player. But the biggest thing you want to see is not – gathering at all you want to see them just run through people all right you don't you don't want to see a catch tackler at all correct um, I correct mean, he's a striker so, yeah. um so on this one uh, this is where again i think this is where you get into in high school one thing for him to improve on is just see how he finishes the play super high and he's just kind of and, and that's he can do that to people in high school that's just the thing again when i was watching this play i love how he runs 
and how he and how he's always trying to hit someone. And you can see that mentality of I'm going to hit someone. But I would like to see this be a little lower and more of a shoulder tackle because that is honestly something when you're throwing your head like that in college. One, it protects you. And two, you know, you can end up being um, a targeting call. So it's just those are habits and things that happen in high school, being bigger and stronger than people you're going against. But that would be a thing, again, I'd like to see him play a little bit more bent here. A couple more clips here to bring up. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. I think this one is this is a 227, right? Yeah, this yeah. is my favorite clip on the tape. Okay. Because right here I see like true linebacker ability. What I love is he presses the line of scrimmage with bent knees and he's square. When I say press the line of scrimmage, I mean he works downhill and he's square in a good football position, meaning his feet are shoulder width apart. He's bent at the ankles, knees, and hips. And then he works lateral, folds back in, and makes a play. And you see him bring his hips on contact. This is the most complete linebacker play to me on the entire tape. And I know, like, obviously the big hits get the flash and everything like that. But to see this little sudden movement in the box, that's what, you know, completes the picture with me. Like, okay, this kid could be a linebacker. You know, now obviously, like I said, you need to go back and watch and find more plays like this to just confirm everything and all that. But that is a very natural linebacker movement play right there, which really, really excites me. You know, and I and I love that he plays bent and brings his hips because I don't think you necessarily see that in all the other plays. I don't know, Coach Zuck, man. Yeah, I know you're retired right now, but a kid like this, he he might bring you out of retirement. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah so, man. We didn't, we didn't get to recruit kids like this at Utah State <laughs> right off the bat. I mean, you found them, right? You had, to, you had to dig and find them, and you know they they didn't look like this right away. But Last no, 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 don't disrespect any of my guys at Utah State. Those are my guys, man. Great, 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 great room. Last one here. Okay. Um, and then this was one where, you know, this was kind of where I did have a little bit of change of direction concern. Because you can see is when you're playing high and you're not in a bent position, it is difficult to change direction. Also, you can see him cross over with his back leg. And when you cross over, when you're still in the box, it's really difficult to get back to a square position to make a tackle. So I would just say right here, just learning. And again, he's a taller kid, so he's probably still growing and learning how to use his body. But just playing a little bit more bent there and being able to fall back in is something, you know, just to stay square on the and finish the play. You know, it's not. And again, we are nitpicking here. Like, I think this is a really good prospect. This is just nitpicking things he can get better at. Um, And and just from a college perspective, what you'd look at, things you'd want to monitor when you go watch him live this spring and watch games in the fall and how he progresses and everything. But overall, I'd say with his overall size, burst, ability to strike, and you see like, and and just some running back instinctual ability, like he's what you look for in terms of a linebacker at the next level. And I will say before, you know, before we got on here, you obviously watched it, but you thought he was a kid coming in for this class. You didn't even realize that he had a whole nother year of, but I mean, that's, that's gotta be a good thing because you still watched it in the lens of him being a guy who was going to come on campus. this. Yeah, for sure. For junior film. That's really, really good. Yeah. So obviously this was stuff to clean up up there for Elijah Melendez, but great start for Miami in that 2025 class at that position, which coach Derek Nicholson early on has done a, a, I think a really good job with that room has has some really impressive body types and athletes in there just has to continue to coach them up and and mold them in this in this defense but coach zuck every week doing a great job here on football school canes fans and football fans remember to leave comments if you have any questions if you have any topics that you want us to kind of break down with coach zuck obviously he's a defensive guy but we've gotten into the air raid with him we've gotten into a bunch of different concepts already here on the Canes Insight Daily Show, and we're going to keep it coming every week into the season as Coach Zuck brings it all for us, brings all the info, brings all the breakdowns for us here on the Canes Insight Daily Podcast. Zuck, appreciate your time as always. Best of luck uh, the rest of the week here, and excited to have you next week as well. Yeah, man. Appreciate you having me like always.